and two overall record for the season. They, they've got a great scoring attack. In my estimation, it's kind of spread here. They have, uh, for instance, uh, people like Ryan Peterson who have 27 points. That includes 13 goals. Then you have uh, Aiden Roberts who has 20 points, only on four goals, but he's got 16 assists. After that, you got guys like Brett Veters who has um, 12 goals, 18 points. And then finally, you have somebody like Michael Cloudon who has five goals, 11 points. So that's their scoring attack here. And again, with a nine and two record, there's no doubt they wanted to be here tonight. They, uh, as you said, they, they took it to St. Joe's yesterday and they wanted to be here and they're gonna be ready for tonight. Also in goal, we do need to point out, they have some good goaltending as well. Blake Micucci, John Zuchlewski, and Samuel Correo. Correo is the one who got the start last night and was very impressive with 32 saves on 33 shots in that victory, Randy. And you know, you look at those two goalies and with Blake, he has a 1.26 goals against average. And Samuel Carrillo has, has got a 1.25. Now that is really, really close. So you really, and their save percentage is very microscopically points apart as well. So I'll tell you, they're solid in goal and that's gonna be a big thing that Canisius is gonna have to face, uh, whether whoever they face tonight in, in the nets. And you set me up perfectly, Randy, because talking about those Canisius Crusaders, and in one word, if you wanna describe their season, dominant. They're six and one in their last seven contests. They opened up winning four of five. They haven't looked back, 10, two and one. They came off a very impressive win as well, 3-2 last night against an always challenging St. Mary's team. One, they had to come back from two different deficits, one nothing and two one before they were able to secure the 3-2 win. And uh, you know, they've been led by a lot of different players as well. Matt Yusinski, Jake LaDuca, overall very impressive this year. They also deserve to be right here playing tonight, Randy. And you know, you bring up one big thing, John. When a team you tell me has been in a deficit, not once, but twice in a game, and they come back from it to win, that shows me a lot of character. So once again, I think St. Francis will have their hands full. Don't get too confident if you get an early lead on this Canisius team, because Canisius can fight back and they could uh, eventually win a game. So it's gonna be a good battle between these two teams. And as you said, Canisius is coming in here with a win streak. They have a 10-2-1 overall record and uh, their leading scorer this year has been Matt Yusinski, and he has four goals, 18 points, so he's got a lot of assists. Their leading goal scorer is, as you just said, Jacob Leduca, he has 11 goals on the season. And he was very good last night. He buzzed, he had a goal and an assist. He was very notable. Eight different players actually had at least a point in the win, and I know, Randy, in games we've worked together throughout this season, you're big on teams that distribute the wealth, they spread it around the lineup, and Canisius really has done that this year. So that's one of the things, again, that St. Francis is gonna have to watch out for here. How many lines that the Canisius team will roll out there at one time, if they can roll at least two lines out there that can, can score for you, that can be a double threat for them. Uh, St. Francis, on the other hand, once they get through their big scores, then everything just kind of trickles down after that. So it's going to be an interesting battle here tonight for sure. And then between the pipes for Canisius, Ronald Colley and John Sues have been quite the formidable tandem, but Ronald Colley has really gotten a lot of the workload. He was the one who played last night, and he was very good as well, turning aside 16 of 18. Lancer shots thrown at him to get the victory. He's been really good for them this year as well. And I'm taking a strong guess he has probably been hot for them down the stretch. You get a goalie that gets in a real good streak, that's the guy you want in your nets. Because if you look at them statistically, there's a big difference. You look at what Ronald Pauley has, he has a 3.57 goals against average versus John Swoos who has a 1.88. Uh, that's a big difference. Save percentage, there's a difference there as well. But my strong guess is, from the coaching standpoint, I have a feeling that Cauley is on a hot streak right now, or they feel he is the goalie they want to go with. Of course, we'll have to wait and see who the starting goalies are. I could be proven totally wrong in this. And John, you know, I've been proven wrong before. So that happens at times. So we'll have to wait and see what happens here with the starting goalies. Maybe not as many times as I have, but as far as Ronald Colley goes, you know, regardless, the fact that they turned to him last night in such an important game, yeah, it, it does show that he is playing pretty well, and he looked very well last night. He was big for them. And when you when you take a look at a situation like they had last night, 
I mean, it's you either you win and you advance. If you lose, season's over with. So you're right. The coaching staff put all their marbles in his basket, and they let him play. They let him in goal, and he didn't let them down. And usually that can be a really good sign for this team. So once again, we will have to see. We're just a few seconds away here as the both teams are heading to the respective benches, getting ready to go for the opening faceoff. And I do believe we will have a national anthem tonight as well. But before we get to that, let's just see. Uh, what are some keys to the game? I mean, this is the championship game. This is what you've been playing for all year, Coach Schultz. What are you telling these players on both sides? Right now, I think from the Kanisha's point of view, I'd say, hey, look, you know what got you here. You know you've been very consistent. You've been winning. You've been on win streaks. But don't get too overconfident. Don't take this St. Francis team for granted. Don't think you can just walk over them. You're going to have to kind of feel things out. You may have to play a little bit of a physical game. On the flip side, St. Francis, they also have a very good record. They've been on a little bit of a streak here. They know what they did. They won last night. They won a big game here. Same thing. I think they're going to try and just probably go into a checking game a little bit more, see what can happen there, and then go from go from that point and see what happens. But it'll be interesting to see the first five or ten minutes of this opening period, how these two teams feel each other out. And getting off to good starts is going to be another key here, and especially because for Canisius, yes, they can fight back, and they've shown that. But you saw how St. Francis last night got off that 2 nothing start, and that really was a big difference in the game. For Canisius, you don't want to be banking on having to do that each time, especially when this is for all the marbles, trying to play from behind, Randy. Absolutely, and we're getting the starting lineups right now for the teams. And we'll see now who is going to be in goal. And it looks like it's going to be Cauley in so the nets for Canisius. They're so going with it. the hot hand, it appears here, Absolutely. Coach Schultz. And that's exactly what I would do. If, if you're, you got back-to-back -back games like this and he was your goalie last night and he was hot, that's who you want in your nets tonight. And now we're getting the introduction of starting lineups for St. Francis. Again, this game coming to you here on WNY Athletics. And alongside Randy Schultz, I'm John Karuba. This is for all the marbles, as we've said. This is the championship game of the Monsignor Martin League against St. Francis and Canisius. And both these teams, we should be in store for a great one because both teams have been playing well. And the starting goalie will be number 39 for them. And that'll be Samuel Carrillo and he will be the starting goal for them. He made 32 saves in that win last night against St. Joe's, 32 saves on 33 shots. As we'll step aside here now for the national anthem. And we are back here at Leecom Harbor Center along with Randy Schultz. I'm John Karuba again. Championship game here tonight for Monsignor Martin League between St. Francis and Canisius. And we were talking about how well these teams were playing coming into this one. And so, again, you're probably going to see a lot of physical play as well, Randy. Both these teams could certainly do that. Absolutely. And I'm sure you're going to start seeing that right away in the opening moments here. They'll each try to get their... Uh their, their hits in early, and we'll see what happens from there. But both teams now have 
met it there. In fact, now uh, Canisius is just going over to their bench uh, to get started here, and then we'll have the face-off in just a few seconds here. And we look forward to bringing you the action here tonight, folks, so stick with us on WNY Athletics. Again, the championship game between the Canisius Crusaders and the St. Francis Red Raiders. From Lee Carm Harbor Center here in downtown Buffalo, what else might you be keeping on an eye on here, Coach Schultz, as we get ready for the puck drop? Well, I'd be interested to see how they're going to match up lines here and how they're going to match up their top scores versus the top scores of their other of the other team. How the two coaches are going to do that. And right now, uh, we have both teams getting ready to go to center ice, and. Uh, It'll be interesting to see you take a look at both benches here and it looks like there's a little bit of an advantage over uh, size wise and St. Francis wins the opening draw. We are underway left to right down the ice St. Francis and a big hit right away far side of the St. Francis zone. Meanwhile, it's cleared back out through center right to left. It is the Crusaders. They'll float a saucer up the left side to flex it down deep into the far corner fighting for the puck. Crusaders behind the St. Francis net. Left corner, throws it in front, could not get the shot away. Stolen in the left circle, and now the Red Raiders play it up the right wing. Canisius there to grab inside their own zone. They'll push it left wing, puck inside the St. Francis line, they'll tap it out. Right to left, Crusaders gonna dump it all the way back down deep. Out of his net for St. Francis, Correo. He'll play it to the line, not out. Held in at the left point. It's played along there as there's a collision at center. Once again, fired back into St. Francis territory. Red Raiders find their own net. Long pass right side to not connect, and this will be an icing call here. Our first whistle just 58 seconds in already. We've seen a couple big hits. Yeah, John, you uh, kind of called it there before the uh, puck was even dropped. Uh, St. Francis got in a couple of good hits over in front of their bench, and then they got another hit right here in front of us. So if we are looking at hits, it's 3 nothing right now, St. Francis. Nowak has the puck for St. Francis, plays it far side. He'll wheel it across up the right wing. Canisius on the steal. It's Schmidt inside his own zone. He'll feather it across far side. Held in in the left corner, fighting for the puck. Right corner Crusaders. They'll start to bring it up. Right to left, feathering it along. They'll dish it the rest of the way. Correo misplayed it out of his net to the far corner. Another big hit there as St. Francis plays it to the far side. It deflects and goes up and out of play. And once again, St. Francis is uh, really laying the lumber down here, so to speak. And uh, they are really hitting the Canisius players uh, pretty hard here. And uh, to, to my knowledge, it's been four hits for St. Francis, no hits so far for Canisius. So we'll see how this plays out as the period rolls on. Urban to take the draw for Canisius. He'll play it. It's stolen in the far circle by the Red Raiders. They'll dish it off the far side and back out. From the right wing, they'll spin it back in. However, Canisius tagging up near side of his own zone. Nowak feeding it cross ice, accepts the return pass. Nowak gliding his way through center. He'll get passed, now he gets stood up right there. Stolen back by St. Francis. Working it left to right, it's played to the Canisius blue line. They'll gun it left side. Crusader's gonna play it on in. Nowak out of the left corner, giving away left point. Winds and fires, that got blocked right in front. Held in center point as it goes right in on the goalie, Correo. He'll toss it to the left corner, giving away. Backhand pass in front, could not drill at home though. St. Francis tied up along the near side half wall. Fighting for the puck, still digging away. 14-43 to go in the first championship game, no score. Left point held in by the Crusaders. They'll zip it back behind the St. Francis net. Controlling it far side, working it, taking it to the far wall. Sets up right point, firing one, got blocked. Second opportunity, right circle, backhand in on goal. And Correo gonna do the smart thing. He'll just dive on top of that, Randy as that was really the first kind of pressure that we've seen in this game to this point. Absolutely, and then you pretty much took the words right out of my mouth on that one. That's the real first pressure either team has shown on each other. Canisius really putting uh, some shots on goal there and trying to uh, get an, uh, a quick lead here if they can. Coin wins the draw right to a one turn and that's whistled wide to the far side. Back to the left point, it's finally brought out the center for the Red Raiders, sidesteps a hit. Works across the Canisius line, right circle from left to right. They get stolen away, and it's going to be fired all the way down the length of the rink, right on Correa. He'll leave it off back behind his own net. Controlling it, it's Matthew Bowen. He'll start out. 
Getting a pass up the left side. Broken up right at the Canisius blue line. Far side to coin. Schmidt a little out of his range. Stolen back by the Red Raiders. It's played ahead. Working it. Having in high slot. Red Raiders. Freyer Risser. That goes wide. Far side. To the left corner. Puck tied up. It goes back to the far half wall. Puck still being tied there. Canisius will bounce it out through center. St. Francis grabs in their own end with 13 and a half to go opening period. No score. Red Raiders gunning a pass right up the middle. That'll be broken up by the Crusaders. Working it ahead left side. Cutting across the line left circle. Try to feed it in front. Didn't work. Then they try to go for the puck near side, but that's cleared away. To the left corner, held in, right to left, Canisius. High point shot, redirected, oh, and that bounces wide of the far post. Held in again, left point. Canisius winds and fires, blocked. Comes out through center. Bowen weaving his way left to right for St. Francis. High slot, firing one, and redirected, and scored! And with 12.56 to go in the first, despite the pressure from Canisius, it's St. Francis who scores. Randy, what a start. And I'll tell you, that was a nice bang, bang, move, tic-tac-toe, whatever cliche you want to use. I'll tell you, that was a nice setup by the line there. And uh, there was a clean shot all the way. And uh, really, St. Francis really, really was moving the puck on that one. That pinballed across the line for sure. As we're going to have a face-off at center ice. We'll wait to see who got the goal. Canisius wins the draw. Schmidt in his own zone right to left. Playing it up the left side. St. Francis takes it away from the near side. Red Raiders will steer it on along. Puck tied up in the near half wall. Out through center it comes. Canisius still has it. They tried to play it in, but stolen back by the Red Raiders. Controlling it, Pearson threw it towards the goal. Turned away goal stick. Cauley left half wall, firing one. That's going to go well wide. Trickles back to the right point. Ricochet down low. Peterson behind the net. Backhand pass in front did not connect. From the near wall, Red Raiders hold the zone. They'll pinch it in down low. 12-15 to go on the first. one nothing. our score for the Red Raiders. Canisius with a long outlet right wing. St. Francis there to intercept. Control it as they'll work it ahead up the right wing. And now a bump there as it's taken back by Canisius. Left circle, throws it right out in front. Kick save made. Comes to the far corner. And now it's steered back around the end boards and right back through center. Canisius from right to left, gonna play it up the left side, did not connect. Stolen back by the Red Raiders. Far side given away, Schmidt holds it right point, takes a bump, plays it down low. Peterson will intercept for the Red Raiders and clear. Up the right wing, long shot from center ice, gonna bounce right in on the goaltender, Cauley. Far side, giving it a long pass right side, did not connect, and it is gonna go wide here for icing. 11.27 to go in the first, one nothing. St. Francis will step aside. We realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house. We're confident we'll find your dream home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Face off coming up down, deep just... in Canisius territory. To the right of Kali, off the draw comes far side. Canisius by in their own net. Crusaders are working along and cleared out through center. Left to right, Red Raiders working their way up, playing it far wing. And they take a bump, but it goes right in on the goaltender. And Call gives it away, right out in front. Couldn't slam it home, though. Dangerous play. High slot. St. Francis left circle, firing a wrister. Big glove save blocker side. And then another one right in. And Colley couldn't cover up on it, but we get a whistle here as the net comes off. But nervous moments there for Canisius. They came very close to finding themselves in a two-goal deficit a couple times, Randy. Well, I'll tell you. I <laughs> Mr. Cauley there in the nets, he uh, he really was a little loose with that puck. He uh, tried to make some fancy plays. You don't make fancy plays around the net as a goaltender. You, you try and control that puck. Off the draw, Seth Payne plays it to the right circle. Puck tied up. Now it comes to the high slot. St. Francis keeps the zone. Right point, they'll zip it left circle. Deflected away by the Crusaders. Right to left, it's Coyne making his way right circle. Cuts him backhand, that slides wide to the far side. To the near corner, held in, left point, winds and fires, kick save. To the far wing, held in. Crusaders take a bump, but they'll dish it back around the end boards. Left corner of St. Francis territory, comes to the left circle. Red Raiders break it up. Left to right, they'll come racing across the Canisius line. 
Right circle, they'll spin it down low. Near corner, Crusaders have it with 10-17 to go on the first. one nothing St. Francis. From the far side, Red Raiders steal just inside their own line. Up ice left to right. They'll whip across Canisius line right circle. Could not control it. Stolen in the near corner by the Crusaders. From the far side, they'll wing it on ahead. Backhand pass right through the middle. It's the Crusaders galloping in across the line, but Bowen with a hit there to take them off the play. St. Francis in their own zone. Gives it away left point. Pinched down low. Left corner. Worked along. Another shovel pass down low. Stolen again by Bowen. He'll flip it high in the air on his backhand. Near side out through center. Crusaders racing back inside their own end. They'll float a saucer up the left side. Pass did not connect, and this will be an icing call here with nine and a half in the first. And actually, I'll tell you, John, here in the first period, it has been, for the most part, all St. Francis. Not only offensively, but they have played well defensively as well, and they've played well in goal. They've played well in giving out the hits, so they're dominating the game right now. Canisius has just got to get their... Uh, act together here a little bit more and to see if they can get some shots on goal. Off the draw, Canisius. It's stolen in the far corner by Roberts. Peterson onto the puck for St. Francis. Left to right down the ice. Out of the left corner, played it in front, did not connect. Canisius will play it on a head up the near side. They'll whip it out through center. Right to left across St. Francis line in stride right. So firing Rister, blocker save. Rebound, they couldn't get it on net as it was blocked. Comes harmlessly near side. And then Roberts with a long backhand pass down and it's going to go right on the goaltender Cauley. He'll leave it off behind his own net. Controlling it there number five Adam Trubish. He'll control far side. Side steps a hit but he'll play it up the right wing. Intercepted right at the St. Francis line only to watch the Crusaders send it right back in. St. Francis behind their own net. 4-3 shots on goal. 1-0 St. Francis our score. 8-40 to go first period. Long pass right side stolen away by Schmidt in the Canisius zone. Right to left, they come up the ice. Crusaders across the St. Francis line. Left circle, backhand right out in front. That's swatted away there by the Red Raiders. Pushing it up the right wing. Out through center, they'll come. One-on-one -on -one stopping and turning. Lays it back inside their own zone. From the far wing, the Red Raiders dish the rest of the way. Crusaders back by their own net. They're going to pass up the left side. Working their way across St. Francis blue line. Right, so firing one got blocked. That howitzer goes to the far corner. Redirects to the near side half wall. Red Raiders there to grab, giving away. High slot firing one, kick save. Right circle held in, playing it to the far corner. It's the Red Raiders there to grab. They still have it in their own end, and now they'll finally get it out. Schmidt couldn't control for Canisius. Back down the length of the rink it goes, and it looks like we're gonna get a call here, maybe an icing. It looks like it's gonna be an icing call, John. I, I was kind of surprised on that. I thought the uh, Canisius defenseman had a shot at it with his uh, glove hand. Uh, apparently the referee felt uh, differently about it and the faceoff comes all the way down back to the St. Francis end. And as uh, you said, St. Francis up one to nothing here, 744 remaining here in the first period. Ryan coined to take this draw for Canisius. He'll lose it promptly to St. Francis in the far corner of their own end, Red Raiders left to right, and they'll push it out to center ice. Crusaders in their own end from the near side. Right to left, they'll gun it down the far wing, but it deflects and goes right into the Canisius bench, out of play. And again, uh, right now, Canisius, the only thing they actually have a lead on is the shots on goal. They have uh, four goals, or four shots on goals, the three for St. Francis. Uh, the thing with Canisius, they're not getting rebound shots. That's uh, They need to get in closer to that goal. Seth Payne wins the neutral zone draw for the Red Raiders. From left to right, they'll push it into Canisius territory. From the far wing, Crusaders play it straight up the middle. Right to left, they'll work. It's Morrow who will push it ahead. Then now he'll bat it down to the left circle. Puck tied up now, comes right out in front, but they couldn't slam it home. Intercepted on the doorstep. Red Raiders left to right, three on two across the Canisius line. Far corner, Red Raiders stop and turn. They'll wheel it back behind the Canisius net. Puck tied up, they're still digging away. Coin finally pries it free for Canisius. Plays it to the line and can't plinkle it out yet. Held in by Canisius, now they will as it goes through center. Left to right, here comes St. Francis. Wheeling their way across the line. High slot, couldn't get the shot away and it goes right in on Cauley who decides I'm just gonna dive on top of it for the whistle. And uh, once again, there seems to be a little objection from the St. Francis bench on that one. Uh, I 
Not exactly sure why, but uh, but again, it was a very, very good move uh, by number four there, uh, Ty Broad for uh, St. Francis. He's made some very nice moves. He has a goal here tonight as well. He scored in last night's game as well, so he's been on fire for them. Canisius wins the draw to the far side, playing it right up the middle, stolen back by the Red Raiders, and they'll dish it deep. Cauley out of his net, drops it off behind his own zone from the far corner, gonna work it straight up the middle, held in. Crusaders now will shuffle it, but can't get it out. Held in far point, but they do rule offside here with 6.23 left in the first. And it's been pretty entertaining to this point, Randy. Both teams have had chances. Absolutely, it's been going from one end to the other here. We really haven't had a good clean shot on goal here in the last couple of minutes as both teams are still trying to get going offensively here. Peterson wins the neutral zone faceoff for St. Francis, left to right down the ice, but they can't get it in the Canisius zone. From the far side, Matthew Zach gonna dish it right in on Cauley, and again, he'll just do the smart thing, not gonna make any fancy plays, just covers up, just do the smart thing. Yeah, exactly, and I think he learned his lesson from that earlier uh, attempt uh, where he tried to get fancy with it and fl uh, fly it around behind from the net, and it almost cost him a goal at that point in time. Peterson wins the draw back, center point. Bowen works the a firing one, and that went off the skate in front, went way up there and out of play. And once again, they uh, they win a faceoff here, and they get that quick snapshot away, and again, it was deflected. So uh, they're, they're, St. Francis is thinking shots here. They, they're trying to get shots on goal if they can. Off this draw, it's tied up. Back to the far point, stolen by Canisius. They'll make their way out. Schmidt across the St. Francis line to the near corner, fighting for it. Red Raiders one on two. They'll work it back with 5.50 to go in the first. It's the championship game of Monsignor Martin League. 1-0 St. Francis. Canisius in front of their own line near side. Stolen back by the Red Raiders. Canisius there to grab it once again. And they'll gun it off the left wing boards back deep. Controlling it is Carrillo. He'll play it off far wing. St. Francis weaving their way. Ryan Young. He gets stood up there though. Canisius turnover in the neutral zone. Right to left down the ice. Inside their own end. They'll work it straight up the middle on the saucer, hitting the line in stride left circle. Now Stoss turns, fed it across, but they couldn't get the stick on it. Canisius may have wanted a call there, but none coming. St. Francis in their own end, left to right. They'll work it for Bowen. He'll weave his way through center, crosses the line, tried to sidestep, stolen back. Canisius with a long pass left side, deflected so no icing. St. Francis racing after it there to grab it. Samuel Sachowski behind his own net. Now he'll play it up the far wing. Playing it back, stolen at the right point. Came right out in front, that swatted away. And now St. Francis gets it out. Left to right, they'll work their way across the line. Right circle, feeds it across but couldn't handle the pass. Left corner, St. Francis in Canisius territory. Red Raiders from left to right. Puck tied up near side. They're digging away for it. It's held in by the Red Raiders. Side steps a hit, controls it again, throws it out in front, that one off a stick over top of the net. To the far corner, still working on it. Canisius there to grab far side. They'll drive it right through the middle. Right to left back comes Canisius. It's Aiden Ward stopping up left circle. Side steps a hit as it's intercepted far corner of St. Francis territory. Stretch pass right wing, stolen by Schmidt. Canisius dumps it right back in. From the far side, St. Francis. Trying a long stretch pass and does not connect up the left wing. Icing the call here, Randy. End to end action. Absolutely end to end action. And I know St. Francis is trying to get that breakout uh, from their end and throwing what I call those home run passes. And uh, again, unsuccessful on that one. They haven't been successful too much yet. Uh, only seven shots on goal here between the two teams. Off the draw comes far corner. Held in right point. Canisius will play it off to the far circle. Now it's played back around and finally out over the line. Canisius storming back after it in their own zone. They'll play it right wing. St. Francis picks it off in their own territory. With 3.40 to go in the first, one nothing St. Francis. Dish down deep, comes to the far corner, and now it's given away. Back behind the net, came right in front to the left circle, did not connect. And now it's played to the line, not out left point. Held in St. Francis, high point, stolen back by Canisius. Crusaders will glide it off the left wing and back out through center. 
Canisius there to grab, gets tied up in the neutral zone. St. Francis there to steal, gets stood up. Here come the Crusaders, left circle, taking it high slot, firing one, what a big save, rebound loose as Correo was down and bumped into, no call. Play carries on, St. Francis from the near wing, playing it out through center. They'll work their way and they'll shovel it into Canisius territory with 2.50 to go here in the first, one nothing St. Francis. Right to left, Canisius gonna dive it deep into the far corner of St. Francis territory. Back behind their own net. Wheeled to the near side corner. Left to right, working their way. Bowen hitting it in stride, two on one left circle. Cutting, fire one slipped one of the far post. To the near corner, puck gets tied up there. Digging away, trying to cycle it free. Still can't, trying to really dig away at it. Now it's Canisius who gains control. Left point held in by the Red Raiders, controlling it by Canisius. And for the far wing, they're gonna gun it right side, but it did not get a piece of the bench, so play carries on. Red Raiders in their own zone, up the right wing, hitting the line in stride as St. Francis left to right, firing a shot that deflects and goes up and out of play. So we will step aside, one up in St. Francis. With exclusive buyer insights and our 100% money back guarantee, we're confident we'll find buyers for your home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Face off coming up here deep in Canisius territory. Peterson to take the draw. He'll swing it back for St. Francis right point, held in. Now it's spun down low to the near corner, takes the bump. Peterson spins it back right out in front. Fan on the shot. Turnaround opportunity didn't work, and now the net comes flying. Another lucky break there for Canisius, Randy. St. Francis knocking on the door. Absolutely. St. Francis has really been putting some serious pressure on here, even though they've only got three shots recorded on goal. They have put a lot of pressure around that net. Shots have gone wide, and uh, let's just put it this way. Goaltending for Canisius have been busy. Canisius wins the draw. Near side, I think we see now why Cauley got the start. From the near corner, it's played around to the left half wall. Crusaders in their own zone. They'll gun it ahead left side. Stolen by Bowen inside the St. Francis line. From the far side ahead to Aiden Roberts. Floating a saucer up the middle. Now controlling it left to right down the ice. Bowen across Canisius line, so throws it in on goal, turned away. Steered to the far corner for Roberts. Back around the end boards. Right corner, Bowen again. He'll glide it down deep to the near corner. Puck still being tied up there. It's the Crusaders there to grab far side, and now they'll gun it back out through center. Controlling it, it's the Red Raiders inside their own zone. One ten to go here, first period. one nothing St. Francis with the lead here in the championship game in Senior Martin. Played up the right wing for Roberts, who will backhand it out to center for the Red Raiders. Red Raiders grab it again as we're inside a minute now to go on the first. Left to right, Red Raiders across Canisius line. Right circle, could not control the pass, but it's sent down low, back by the net, threw it in front, no one there to throw it home though, and Canisius will play it out through center. Right to left, driving the line hard, into St. Francis territory, couldn't get a shot away, far circle, 38 seconds left to go, puck tied up behind the St. Francis net, still trying to get it back to the far point, and out through center it goes. It's the Red Raiders trying to get there first, and they do. Left circle, Canisius zone, try to throw it in front. Swatted away with 20 seconds remaining in the first. Long stretch pass left side, did not connect. That'll be an icing, but if that one would have connected, that would have been big trouble for St. Francis. It didn't, and uh, now the faceoff is going to come back down in the Canisius end, and I'll tell you, what a brutal time for St. Francis to be going through a line change. All of a sudden, they have the puck. They decided to go on a line change justifiably so, but as it turns out, they could not get the pass completed there that they needed. And off the draw, Canisius wins it back behind their own net. Right to left with 14 seconds left. Crusaders puck inside their own zone. They'll pinball across ice to the near side there to grab it. It's Melligan. He gets tied up though with five seconds and four. Gets it free back behind the net. Far corner, and that's how this first period comes to an end. And another big bump right as the period ended, but at the end of one, one off in St. Francis. That was entertaining. They brought it in the first period. Both sides did in this championship game, Randy. And there's hitting on from both sides. Uh, shots on goal. Canisius had five. St. Francis had four. 
I believe St. Francis still had more hits than uh, Canisius did, but it was very entertaining, and it should be a very entertaining second period coming up. And so on that note, we'll step aside for now. We'll be back with the second period momentarily. John Karuba and Randy Schultz, our score after one in the Monsignor Martin Championship game, St. Francis with a 1-0 lead over Canisius after one right here on WNY Athletics. Second period next. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today, and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, the Utes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G &G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G &G Fitness. Your goal is our goal. Call 835-WOLF. Remember, you call on the wolf. That's all you had to say. Call today. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in Western New York, providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, the Utes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services, from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G &G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G &G Fitness. Your goal is our goal. Call 835-WOLF. Remember, you call on the wolf. That's all you had to say. Call today. 
Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in Western New York, providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. We welcome you back here inside Lecom Harbor Center. It is the Monsignor Martin Championship. It's between the St. Francis Red Raiders and the Canisius Crusaders. 
Again, alongside Coach Randy Schultz, I'm John Karuba taking you through this one. And before we break down this first going into the second period, we want to remind you again that tonight's game is brought to you by Howard Hanna. Are you looking to buy or sell your home? Howard Hanna Real Estate Services is the number one family owned and operated independent broker in the USA. The full service real estate company has more than 350 real estate, mortgage, insurance, title, and escrow service offices across 11 states, including Allen Tate Realtors in the Carolinas, with more than 12,000 sales associates and staff, including many of the industry's top producing real estate agents. For more information, visit www.howardhanna.com. Home happens here. And as we get the second period underway, 1-0 St. Francis was our score after one. And while it seemed like Canisius had a lot more zone time, St. Francis is the one who was able to capitalize on their opportunity. But overall, it was an entertaining first. What are you looking forward to as we get ready for the second, Randy? Well, I'll tell you, from, from the uh, Canisius point of view, they've got, I know that they're leading right now with shots on goal 5-4. to four. But they need to get some better scoring chances. And when they get the shot on goal, they've got to get those rebound shots and get maybe like a second and a third shot on that St. Francis goaltender because right now that's not happening. On the other end, St. Francis, they have been throwing the puck around pretty well. They have gotten some opportunities. They just haven't been able to connect either around that net. So if they do start connecting, this could be a very entertaining and opening up type game. But right now it looks like it's going to be a close checking, close hitting game for both teams. And one of the players we spotlighted to start tonight's telecast here, Randy, it was number four for St. Francis, Ty Broad. He got the goal, and again, he just threw it to the net, and it pinballed right in. Simple as that sometimes. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, it was a, it was a nice pass that he took from his uh, line mate there, and he got a nice pass, and he didn't hesitate. I think he may have taken, like, maybe one stride, and that shot was gone, and uh, goaltender, goaltender never even had a chance on that one. It was a clear beating, so... It's one to nothing, and we are about 30 seconds away from the opening faceoff of the second period here. But as we know, Canisius, while they didn't get off to the fast start they wanted on the scoreboard, they're not strangers to playing in this position. They did it twice last night, so you certainly can't count them out. And that's one of the things we did talk about in the pregame, that we talked about the adversity. If they get behind, they could come from behind here. And so they are very used to that, and uh, don't be surprised. They come out flying here in the early moments of this second period. And so it is Randy Schultz along with John Karuba. Second period about set to get rocking and rolling from Lecom Harbor Center in downtown Buffalo. Again, right now our score, 1-0 St. Francis Red Raiders over the Canisius Crusaders. And again, we also saw a lot of hits in the first like we thought we would. And you know, John, the other thing here, and this is a little off the ice thing, I'm glad to see a number of uh, parents showing up here for the game today. I know there's limitations in the arenas around here. I get around to a lot of arenas covering different hockey games in that. Uh, a nice crowd here today to cheer on both Canisius and St. Francis. And uh, we appreciate the parents uh, being able to come in. And we appreciate the viewers who are watching us here on, uh, on their streaming On devices. WNY Athletics. Very good there, Coach Schultz. And we are underway, second period. St. Francis plays it right up the middle, and he gets hauled to the ice. No penalty. St. Francis in an uproar. Play carries on right to left. Red Raiders dump it deep into Canisius territory. Broad out of the left corner. Stolen back now. Backhand didn't make it through. Second chance turned away. Now they keep jamming away at it. And that slipped wide to the far side. Left corner, and now a Canisius player goes down to the near corner. Again, play carries on. Held in left circle. St. Francis in the Canisius zone. Wheeled to the left corner. It's worked back around to the near half wall. Crusaders finally get it out. Left to right up the ice they come. Across the St. Francis line, left circle. Gets rubbed off the play left corner. Brought on the takeaway for the Red Raiders. Taken back again by the Crusaders. A minute gone by here, period number two. One nothing St. Francis to score. Long lead in left side and fan on it was Canisius, but Crusaders grab it again in their own zone. That could have been dangerous. Instead, it trickles back out through center. Comes into the St. Francis line left circle. Canisius gonna steer it down deep. There to take it near side. It's played to the right point, held in. Right circle, backhand pass across. Oh! Wide open net, but he gunned it wide. 
Left point, Canisius holds it in, winds, fires, deflected, that goes over top of the net. Held in at the right point, Crusaders, they'll wind and fire, that goes wide, far post. Held in, far half wall by the Crusaders, left to right. Right point, they hold it, whipped it across, did not connect. To the far side, it's Peterson, backhands it, they'll make their way, can't get it out though. Relentless pressure by the Crusaders, left corner, tried to throw it in front on the doorstep, didn't connect. Now the Red Raiders will make their way to center. Pass up the left wing, Roberts across the Canisius line, right to a sharp angle shot, nice save there by Cauley to stay with that, and he'll hang on, but a lot of opportunities on that other side. Canisius very close to getting the equalizer. They've really come out here very strong here in the second period. They're putting on a pretty good offensive threat uh, in, in that uh, against St. Francis, uh, and, and as far as the refereeing concerns, and I'll comment more on that in a second here. Canisius wins the draw. Gun to the far side. Crusaders can't clear it though. Held in right corner. St. Francis stolen back by the Crusaders behind their own net. 14.50 to go, period two. One nothing, St. Francis the score. Canisius with a long outlet right side. Did not connect, icing the call. And now, Coach Schultz, you can continue breaking that down. Well, I, I really think here in the case, I know that both teams have been uproaring about uh, the fact of non-calls. And I think that is the case of the referees are going to let these players play the game. And it's going to have to be such an obvious call that before that they'll actually blow the whistle and call something. Grayson set of pain is kicked out of the circle, but St. Francis gets it anyway. Left corner, threw it in front, did not connect. Stolen back by Canisius. Left to right, they'll make their way out through center. They'll deal it down deep into St. Francis territory. Now giving away right corner, and they tried to play it in front with an empty net, didn't work, then comes right out in front. That's deflected away near side again, held in by the Crusaders. And now a big hit in the corner. Play continues. Left corner, wraparound chance they made. Rebound, kick save. Rebound to the right circle, but they overskate it. Comes back behind the net. Left corner, stolen back by the Crusaders. Held in center point, working it left side. They'll gun it down deep. Finally, it's the Red Raiders there to steal, but they still can't clear in the near corner. Raiders to the line, not out. Left half wall, Canisius controlling. Left half circle, they take it behind the St. Francis goal. Throws it across, that didn't connect. From the near corner, it's the Red Raiders gonna guide it off the boards, not out. Right point, fed across left circle. Canisius left to right in St. Francis territory. Wrap around, they made rebound. They chip away, third chance, it still stayed out. And now they're looking for the puck, but I don't think it ever went in. Now they signal it did. With 13.36 left, it is a goal, it looks like. They kept whacking away, but they're still looking with 13.36 to go here, period number two. And then the net came off, trying to make sense of what happened there, Randy. Well, I'll tell you, I feel for the referee in this call because he's going to go have, have to go over to the St. Francis bench and explain his call because right now, according to the referee, we have a 1-1 game. I think the referee was waiting to find that puck and see where it ended up, and he's saying that puck did cross the line. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens here on this call, but um, they're, they're discussing it with the coach. But one thing that this does show is you were right this time, Coach Schultz, like you've been a lot of times. You say about being wrong, you've been right a lot, and right there they did exactly what you said, took the shots, got the rebounds, and they may have just been rewarded. And I, and I think, and, and really the referee waited until the absolute, all of a sudden the, the whistle kind of blew and he looked down, he, I, I'm, I am presuming a player, it could have been the goalie, it could have been the defenseman, moved their leg or foot, and all of a sudden there was the puck over the line. And it must have been over enough, but he is explaining, referees are right over now in front of the St. Francis bench, and they're explaining everything. And uh, it looks like it is a one, well, I- Well, we're still waiting. We're still For waiting. the moment, it's one nothing, but it could be, we think, a tie game. But right now the scoreboard's still showing 1-0 St. Francis with 13.36 to go in the second. And so we're still waiting for this call, looking. Boy, you see players, they say about not scoreboard watching. I don't think I've seen this many players be this invested. You see them both kind of looking over there, especially on Canisius' side. Still trying to find out what this oh, call is. Oh, it's a penalty shot. Oh, they're gonna call a penalty shot. 
as it's Canisius coming in left circle, cuts in and big save there! Slamming the door was Correo. So they said no goal, but they must have said closing the hand on the puck in the crease and they ruled a penalty shot. But that's a big stop and it remains one nothing here, Randy. Wow. What a turn of events tonight. A very big turn of events and I should have caught the hint of it when he placed the puck at center ice and left it there right on the dot. And all of a sudden he comes out and he calls one of the uh, Canisius players out to uh, take the shot. And all of a sudden I realized and that was, this was a penalty shot. That was Dan Urban who took the shot. But a great job by Correo to stay with him. And so we don't get an equalizer. Instead we have a great opportunity. But it remains a one nothing St. Francis lead. Now for, for Canisius right now, I'm 100% I'm feeling they are frustrated. They, they think they had a goal. That goal gets washed out. They get an opportunity for a penalty shot. That doesn't work. They have done everything but put that puck in the net. They have eight shots on goal to six for St. Francis. The faceoff is going to come just to the right of the St. Francis net. And I'll tell you, it has been quite the game here as the St. Francis goalie goes back in the game. He accepted congratulations from his team on stopping that penalty shot. Now we'll get back to action here with 13.36 remaining. And after all that, John, it's still one to nothing, St. Francis. Face off coming up longest no goal ever as it's one nothing St. Francis deep in St. Francis territory. It'll be Urban to take the draw for Canisius. They roll it along to the far side, stolen by Bowen. Has it back behind his own net for the Red Raiders. Rolling it to the near side, half wall held in. Now it's spun down low to the near corner, big hit there. Now right corner, threw it out in front, deflected away. To the far corner, it's Bowen, he'll thread the needle far side, back out over the line. Controlling St. Francis, stolen back, Urban, high slot, couldn't get a shot away, but he gets hauled to the ice, penalty coming up here, and I think we're gonna get our first call, and it's a trip here, Randy. So now we get an obvious one, and now a big opportunity for Canisius to go on the power play. Bowen going to the box for the Red Raiders. And I'll tell you, I was about ready to say that Bowen had made a very, very nice play for St. Francis. And as it turns out, he gets a penalty call on him for tripping. I mean, he stretched his stick out. He stretched his arm out as far as he could do to stop that uh, Canisius uh, skater from getting a shot on goal. Coyne wins the draw right point, setting it up. Now Canisius will work at right circle. They'll send it down low, back to the right half wall, out center point. Control it, now they have it again, working it to the left circle. Canisius, again out high left point, left to right down the ice. Right circle could not connect on the pass. St. Francis slaps it, not out. Right circle held in. Crusaders, nice keeping it the center point. They'll walk their way, controlling it down low with another minute and a half on the power play. Right point, Crusaders, right circle. They'll glide it down low out of the near corner. Feeds it right out of front. Save made. Diving for it is Correo. And again, another big stop there. He just keeps that puck out of the net a lot here tonight, Randy. He just keeps keeping him out. And I'll tell you, Correo, he, he's a big boy. I mean, he is a tall goaltender in there. But as tall as he is, he's got some width to him as well. And he's using every inch of his body to stop pucks tonight, to stop them out. This time he was stretched out on the ice and dove for that puck and stopped it. Cicado loses the draw to St. Francis. Red Raiders will glide it off the near side boards. Pinballs back down the length of the rink. It's Conley out of his net. He'll play it near wing. A Canisius player lost an edge, but they'll play it out through center. Left to right across the St. Francis line, left circle. Controlling it back by the Red Raiders net. Out in front, left circle, wrister, and that's wired high and wide. Right point held in. Played to the right circle, getting it across to the far wall. Canisius back to the left point, setting up shop. Winds and fires, got blocked. Left circle, Houcher, save main. Oh, and they had a tap in, but couldn't control the puck. Back to the right point, held in by Canisius. That puck was a little on edge from the near circle. Stolen back by St. Francis, and from the near side, spin it back down. With a half minute remaining in the penalty to Bowen, Canisius still on the power play. Urban, who missed on the penalty shot, gives it left corner. He'll bring it up ice for Canisius left to right. Floats a saucer. Will play it straight up the middle. Guns it right wing. Across the St. Francis line. Stolen again and once more slapped back down the length of the rink. As it is Correa, he will play it back to the near corner. 
Gives it out in front. Canisius from left to right with six seconds remaining man advantage. Taking it hard, Urban across the St. Francis line left to right. Near a corner, back. Threads the right half wall, fires one. That ski rants up and over the net. Comes to the far corner, stolen by St. Francis. Long pass left side, did not connect. Icing the call, one nothing still St. Francis as we step aside. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard hannah home happens here back here at harbor center one nothing st francis off this draw red raiders near corner they're going to spin it around it's tucked back to the right half wall still digging away 10 50 to go second period back to five aside one nothing st francis Roberts through the neutral zone, gets taken off the play by Canisius, and are we gonna have a call? Yes, it does. We're gonna get a hook, we'll see who it's on. And it looks like it's going to Canisius, so the Crusaders couldn't tie the game. Now they're gonna be shorthanded. It's gonna go on number 25, Aiden Ward, Randy. And I'll tell you, this may be the break that St. Francis needs right now. They have not really done that much offensively in this uh, second period so far. They only have six shots on goal to the now 11 for Canisius. But we'll see what they do on this power play coming up. Off the draw, Roberts, left point, feeds it across, Red Raiders hold the zone from the right point. They fan on it to the far side, back out high right point, spun to the far half wall, Red Raiders setting up, left point, now feeds it in front, that deflection wide to the left corner, Red Raiders stay on it, left point, whip it across, they have it once more, down low to the right corner, Back out high, right to left, Red Raiders. Right throw, firing one, and that's whistled in, caught part of the post. Back to the left point, held in. St. Francis from the far point, high slot. Left circle, could not control the one-timer. Puck was at his skates. Stolen back in the left corner. Puck deep in Canisius territory. Roberts, far side for Peterson, takes a bump. Still in the attacking zone. Red Raiders stop up, right point. Accepts the return, pass right circle, fires a wrist, SCORE! Bullseye on the turnaround, they gun it home, and there was the break, Randy. 9.49 to go in period number two. Now St. Francis up by two, two nothing. What a power play. They couldn't get it out, Canisius Gooden. No, and they, uh, Canisius was really struggling on that, on their penalty kill, to try and clear that puck out of there. And a couple times, they could have cleared it, and they could not get it out of the of their zone and St. Francis was very patient and I could see what they were trying to do and that was to get somebody either in front of that net to block the goalie's view but they got a shot in from quite a distance and let it let it ring and I'll tell you nice shot on goal two to nothing St. Francis. Urban wins the draw for Canisius he'll gun it on ahead stolen back Bowen right to left St. Francis firing one right circle gloving it there as Cauley He'll hang on to the far side, and the shot's now 11-8, but St. Francis is the only one that's been able to put the puck in the net so far. And, and again, they are really trying to take over here a little bit, and uh, no question, Canisius has got to be a little frustrated right now. Urban wins the draw for Canisius near corner. They'll play it ahead up the right wing. Laduca up the middle, couldn't control, but now he'll play it on. Right circle in St. Francis territory. Left to right, it's Canisius. Still fighting for it, digging away, trying to get it free. And now Red Raiders do from the far side. They'll spin it near corner with 9.14 to play second. And it's 2-0 St. Francis to score here in the championship of the Monsignor Martin. Randy Schultz, John Kruba taking you through it. Right to left, the long pass left side. Steered to the left corner, Canisius zone. Red Raiders get it behind the net. Fire wall turns and fires. Went off something in front. High slot. Second shit. Score! They just turned and fired it. Taking the shot was Gavin Schwenk back. And so it's now 3 0 St. Francis with 8.53 to go in the second. Another turn of events. Canisius has driven the play, but St. Francis has scored twice. And I think Schwenk is going to get the goal on this. We'll have to listen for that one. But his shot went clean through. And I'm not sure exactly, again, if the goalie saw that or not, but that went right underneath him, right to the back of the net. And now St. Francis has a big three to nothing lead 
over Canisius with 8.53 remaining. Shots on goal. St. Francis has 10. And now we're going to have a goalie and change. Canisius has 11. And we have a goalie change coming in right now. So John Seuss is going to come in. Now, in fairness, this isn't on Ronald Cauley. He played really well, keeping him in the game. He just gave up a couple goals. I think this is just to try to change the momentum. And so... Okay, so we have 8.53 to go in the second. 3-0 St. Francis, our score again. Just trying to change the momentum here. And we will step aside here for this word from Howard Hanna. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Rank the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Back here at Lecom Harbor Center, 3 0 St. Francis, along with my friend Randy Schultz, John Karuba taking you through in this championship game. But as we were saying, Randy, it is a goalie change for Canisius. Ronald Cauley is out. John Seuss comes in. But it's really, it's, it's pretty much just trying to change the momentum here. It really wasn't, you couldn't really blame Cauley on the goals. Not, uh, not on all of them. Uh, I think the last one was maybe, en you know, enough. That was a questionable one there. But uh, right now, you need to do something to shake your team up. And so hopefully the coach now, they change goaltenders. And hopefully this will put a spark into that Canisius team because right now, and again, I use this ter term strongly, Canisius has to be frustrated. They've had open net opportunities at that end with St. Francis that they couldn't bury the puck. They had a couple of other opportunities where they could have scored. They just could not get the puck in the net. They trail 3 to nothing here, 8.53 remaining. Luke Braun wins the draw at center for Canisius. High slot, they'll glide it in towards the goal. However, it's Correo, he'll play it around to the far corner. Red Raiders will backhand out of the zone. Left to right, Canisius sends it right back in again. Far corner, Red Raiders not out. Left half wall turns and fires. Played away of the far post. To the near corner, stolen back again by Canisius. Crusaders play it to the far side. Working at far wall, not out. And now they get it out, right to left. St. Francis across the line. Gallops right circle. Backhand save made by Seuss. To the far side. Stolen back by Crusaders. Left to right across the St. Francis line. Backhand from the left circle. Turned down. Near corner. Red Raiders. Back to the right point. Big bump there. Still loose. Canisius there to grab. They'll cycle it right corner. Throws it in front off the post. They thought they had a goal again taken away. St. Francis with a long clear out. Down the length of the rink, Seuss will just play it back behind his own net. Left to right with 7.48 to go in period number two. St. Francis three, Canisius no score. Left circle, firing one wide of the near side. Puck in the St. Francis zone. Canisius left to right. They have it in the right circle down low. Near corner, threads it out high right point. They'll wind in first, save made. And that trickle wide, and then it comes right in front, but Canisius couldn't bang home the rebound. To the near side it comes. Puck tied up along the near corner. 7.20 to go on the second. St. Francis still by three. They'll push it near glass, but it deflects out of play. And at this point, Canisius has to feel very snake bitten. Again, they just can't cash it. And I'll tell you, John, you, you can use any cliche you want, snake bitten, whatever. And I'll tell you, they've had opportunities. They just have not been able to bury that puck in the net. And they have had the opportunities. So they've got to just keep trying here, at least get one. Coin wins the draw, but now he gets back checked by the Red Raiders. Far side, back behind their own net. Playing it to the near half wall. Still trying to dig it away. Back to the right point. Stolen back by Peterson. Far side, they'll glide it back behind the net. Far wall, and now they'll push it out through center to the left corner. Canisius working it on ahead. Up the left side, broken up again by St. Francis. Right out to center, Roberts gonna push it right back in. Canisius from left to right, they'll control it. It's Melligan sidestepping ahead, right wing to coin. He'll dish it the rest of the way deep. St. Francis behind their own net, giving away to the left point. Canisius winds and fires, that's tipped wide down low by coin. 
to the near corner. Canisius right point, winds and fires right into the bread basket, but again for St. Francis, it's Correo with the answer, and he'll hang on. And Correo, I was talking about earlier, he, he's a very tall boy out there. I went and checked his stats. He is standing without skates on at six foot five. So put those skates on, and that probably puts him up to about six foot seven. Not a bad size goalie to have in your nets. No, especially with a three goal lead. Face off coming up deep in St. Francis territory. And it's Braun who wins the draws. It went right towards the goal, but it got blocked away from the near wing. St. Francis finally gets it out through center. Left to right, Canisius stolen right back by St. Francis. From the far side, they'll spin it deep. Far corner, they'll take it behind their own net. They'll glide it ahead right wing. Pinched keep in, left circle, and then Peterson overskates the puck. Canisius backhands the center. They'll wheel it ahead up the left side. Laduca across the St. Francis line, left circle, overskated the puck. It's the Red Raiders on the takeaway. It's Broad, who scored a goal tonight. Stolen right back by Canisius. Left to right, they'll dart it right back in. Puck in St. Francis territory. Far corner, 5.47 to go here, second period. St. Francis 3-0 as a long outlet right side did not connect. Icing against the Red Raiders. And you know, I can look at both benches across from where we are right now, and you look at that St. Francis bench, and there's a lot of enthusiasm on that bench. Those players are all up. They're cheering. They're banging their sticks. They're yelling. I look at the Canisius bench, a little bit more subdued right now. They need to cheer their teammates on here a little bit. I know that sounds like a little trivial thing, but it can make a big difference. Off the draw, St. Francis near corner. They'll play it out of their own zone. Canisius stolen back. Red Raiders right to left down the ice. Break across the St. Francis line from the far side. Puck in Canisius territory. Canisius there to steal it away. They'll glide a saucer straight up the middle to Urban. Left to right. Canisius across the St. Francis line. From the near side, they'll pitch it back out. Pass up the left wing. It's St. Francis across the Canisius line. Couldn't get a shot away. Out of the left circle. Crusaders get back. They'll play it to the line and not out. Held in high slot. Red Raiders right to left. Now they lose control of the puck. Urban takes it away for Canisius. Left to right, three on two. Across St. Francis line, left circle. Threw it in front, but that's stolen away by the Red Raiders. Right to left here, they come racing. Gallops across the line. Heist left, firing a wrister wide to the far side. To the far half wall. It's the Red Raiders keeping it in. They'll circle the puck deep to the near corner. One on two. Once again, stolen by the Crusaders. Played to the line, not out. Left point, they'll pinball it down deep. Far corner, Canisius. Crusaders attack in their own zone. Playing it up the near. Still behind their own net. They'll start to work their way up and glide it pass out to neutral ice. And then from center, a bouncing shot gonna go wide of Seuss from the near corner. Crusaders play it not out, Pearson right there, throw it in front, oh, and that was so close to going in in the near side. Left circle, Peterson couldn't get the shot away, and now it's played to the far wall. Big bump there as it's cleared out. Once again, the Red Raiders fire it right back in, but it looks like we have a delayed call coming up here. Canisius, or never mind, that may have just been a delayed offside. Red Raiders, it's Roberts playing it up the left side to the line, not out. Peterson left circle, he'll stop up, turns and fires, kick save. And now covering up to the short side, not taking any chances, Randy Asus to get that whistle. Nice move by Asus, it's probably the smartest thing he could do right now is to calm things down here, because right now St. Francis is on a roll. They're getting shots on goal, they're controlling the puck, they're breaking up Canisius passes. They're breaking up a lot of different things here. They're taking control of this game with 3.42 remaining in the second period. Canisius wins the draw to the near corner. Laduca behind his own net. Played it right out in front, not out. Right point, zip down low right corner, comes right out. Peterson shot, and that goes off a stick well wide of the net in front. Held in left circle, goes through the crease. Right point, Peterson keeps it in back behind the net. Stolen far side by the Crusaders. They'll work it around the far half wall. Held in right corner. They get tied up. Crusaders get it free and they'll spin it up, but still not out. Held in left point. Roberts threw it in front for St. Francis. Not out. Right point they hold. Winds and fires. That ricochets goes over top of the net. Far corner. Canisius holds it in and they still can't get it out of their own zone. St. Francis pitches it away. Has it right circle. Floats a saucer across left point. 
Red Raiders putting all the pressure on right now in the far corner of the Canisius zone. Right to left, Red Raiders. Right to firing a shot blocked, and finally, Canisius going to get it out. Broad the first back to retrieve inside his own zone for St. Francis. Working it ahead up the left side. Working across Canisius' line, firing a slapper left circle. Save made five hole. Far corner, Red Raiders. Far circle. They'll drop it off. Right so lasers, one got blocked. Near corner, Red Raiders stay on it. Left corner, one on one, takes a bump. Back behind the net, comes right circle, winds and fires, that got blocked on the howitzer. Far corner stolen back by the Crusaders. Braun plays it up ahead to Urban, left wing, St. Francis line. Glove down in the right zone, comes right in front of the net with inside two minutes to play. Second period, 3-0 St. Francis to score. Red Raiders from right to left. They'll pitch it ahead. Held in center point, and they could not control it. Offside the call. I'll tell you right now, John, St. Francis is controlling everything right now. They're winning all the battles. They're winning the little battles in the corner with the puck. They're winning the battles to the puck. They're winning the battles with the physicalness. They're winning the battles with the shots on goals. They've got the lead three to nothing. Canisius, who started the period very well, now all of a sudden is kind of fallen by the wayside here. Off the draw coin across the St. Francis line. High slot left to right. Firing a wrister in the skates of Laduka. Backhand. And that's Correa who comes right out. And Correa dives on top of it. And you see the frustration from Canisius. One of the players actually slammed his stick coming off the ice. Absolutely. And I, I feel their frustration. There's no doubt about it, John. They've had opportunities. They just haven't been able to cash in on them. Off the draw coin. Left point. Canisius left to right. Out of the far corner. One on two, back out high left point. Winds it first to foot, the kick save. Backhand chance save made, and then the rebound is wide of the near side. Finally out of there by St. Francis. Right to left, working it coast to coast. Left circle, over skated the puck. Canisius with the takeaway. They'll work it up the far wing. It's played up, and then takes a bump, but it is Canisius that dumps it deep. Near corner of the St. Francis zone, right to left, 67 seconds left to play here in period number two. Three nothing St. Francis to score, but a long pass left side did not connect, icing the call. And John, I'll be, I'll be just being a smart aleck here. That was 100 bucks laying on the ice right there with that broken stick. And some lucky parents now are gonna have to replace that stick. But I'll tell you, that's just an example that's just a microism of, of the frustrations Canisius is frustrated with right now. Having those opportunities and just could not cash in. And of course, St. Francis goaltending came up big in that and made a couple of huge saves. So we have to give a lot of credit to their defense and their goaltending here, holding up under the pressure. Yes, indeed, that was a microcosm of what's been going on tonight for Canisius. But how big would it be, though, if they could just get a goal here late? Be huge, absolutely huge, John, you're right. Off the draw left circle, turned and fired towards the net. St. Francis turns in a long lead in right side. They have it, Richard Sharp Eagle shot turned away to the near corner. Now they'll play it back out through center. 47 seconds left to go on the second. Canisius grabs inside their own zone. Charles Piggott, he'll play it far side, did not connect as it goes inside St. Francis territory. From the near wing, Bowen gonna spend it back across. Once again, they get it with 30 seconds to go, period number two. 3-0 our score for St. Francis, and now a bad break there. Right so comes right out in front. Did not connect. Puck deep in St. Francis territory, left circle, left to right. Coin gets taken off the play, no penalty. Second chance, kick save. Back to the left half wall with 15 seconds left in the second. It's played back behind the St. Francis net from the far side. They will glide a pass right side. Did not connect. And is it going to make it far enough for icing? Yes, it will. With 3.7 left, that puck slowly made their way for the whistle. So we're going to get one more offensive faceoff here, Randy. Well, I'll tell you, with Carrillo, you've got to give him some kudos here. The guy has made 15 saves so far. That may not seem like a lot, but I'll tell you, he's faced some point-blank shots and has done a magnificent job. Canisius has pulled their goalie. They're going to go with the sixth attacker here with a little over three seconds to go. Don't really have anything to lose. You're down three if you're Canisius. Coin has the draw tied up. Left circle couldn't get the shot away. And that's how the second period comes to an end. And then more rough stuff after the whistle. But even on that, what a way to sum up this period, Randy, just on that play alone. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I know Canisius has got to be frustrated. There's no 
question about it. They are frustrated. They, they came out of the period very, very well. They started it very well, but now they ended it. They need to get a re rejuvenate and come out strong in that third period. So our score after two in the Monsignor Martin Championship from Harbor Center tonight, St. Francis three, Canisius no score, second intermission. We'll be back with the third period shortly. Again, it's the championship game in the Monsignor Martin League here on WNY Athletics. Alongside Randy Schultz, I'm John Caruba. Third period next. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, the Utes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G &G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G &G Fitness, your goal is our goal. Call 835-WOLF. Remember, you call on the wolf. That's all you had to say. Call today. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in Western New York, providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, the Utes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services, from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. Why do you exercise? To look better? To feel better? To drop a few pounds? To train for an event? To defy age? Or to keep your ability to say yes to the things you love to do? Whatever motivates you, G&G &G Fitness Equipment is here to get you there. Treadmills, ellipticals, rowers, bikes, home gyms, and accessories. We'll pair you with the right equipment, teach you how to use it, and be there every step of your fitness journey. G&G &G Fitness, your goal is our goal. Call 835-WOLF. Remember, you call on the wolf. That's all you had to say. Call today. 
Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500 plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. WNYAthletics.com is the premier high school sports website in western New York. Providing the best sports coverage of Section 6 and Monsignor Martin Leagues. Check out our page for daily game recaps and late-breaking sports news. Our online scoreboards are updated in real time. Never miss a goal or touchdown. Visit WNYAthletics.com today or follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home.
We welcome you back here to the Lecom Harbor Center. And as we get ready for the third period of play, it is the Monsignor Martin Championship game between the St. Francis Red Raiders and the Canisius Crusaders St. Francis with a commanding 3-0 lead along with Randy Schultz. I'm John Caruba. And before we get to the faceoff and break down the third period coming up, we just want to remind you again, this game tonight proudly presented to you by Howard Hanna. Are you looking to buy or sell your home? Howard Hanna Real Estate Services is the number one family owned and operated independent broker in the USA. The full service real estate company has more than 350 real estate, mortgage, insurance, title, and escrow service offices across 11 states, including Allen Tate Realtors in the Carolinas with more than 12,000 and sales associates and staff, including many of the industry's top producing real estate agents. For more information, visit www.howardhanna.com. Home happens here. And as we get set for the third period here, Randy, 3 nothing St. Francis, but the score doesn't indicate really how close this game is. The only difference, St. Francis is putting the puck in the net when they get the opportunities. Canisius, despite all they're doing, including thinking they had a goal, a penalty shot, couldn't get it in, and they haven't been able to convert. That's the difference. The absolute difference in here. And I'll tell you, it's the tale of two teams right now. And I'll be interested to see how Canisius is going to come out here in this early going. They have got, if they're going to be back in this game, they've got to get a goal within that, say, first five minutes of that third period to get back in this game. If they don't, it's going to be a very long period for them. Uphill but they, battle. They've got to really stick with it. They've got to keep doing what they're doing, but they've got to convert those chances and those opportunities they have. They've had them, they just haven't been able to convert them. As we get set here for the third, and if Kanish is going to try to get the goal, who are you keeping an eye on? Well, actually, right now, if, if Kanishis gets a goal, they've got to depend on Laduka or Yusinski to get that goal. I would say they'd be the two players I'd be looking at. Third period underway, folks. Championship game as Laduka wins the draw inside his own zone to the far side, working it up the middle. Right to left come the Crusaders. Urban left circle gets broken up there by Broad, who has a goal tonight. He'll send a long pass right side. Did not connect, icing the call, but if the going to be a goal for Canisius here in offensive zone faceoff early it's a good chance to do it absolutely and that's a it's, they've got to take advantage of these opportunities and they've got to really set a play up be patient get somebody in front of that goalie urban wins the draw back center point held in Canisius golfs it down the left corner threw it in front did not connect and that's stolen away there by St. Francis long pass far side Canisius there to grab behind their own net Right to left with 16.20 to go here. Third period, 3-0 St. Francis, our score. They'll work it up the middle. Pass broken up, brought on the steal. Cutting it on, goal, breakaway backhand. What a safe sauce! Oh, wait, it went in, they score! Originally, it looked like Suss had made the save, and now Canisius is wondering what's going on. But it is a goal, and with 16-12 to go on the third, it's 4-0 St. Francis. Wow, another bad break. Some Canisius players still can't believe it. I'm not sure I believe it. Well, you know, the tough part is you don't have a referee down there. The referee was trailing in the play. That was the tough part. He was coming back. He was trying to play. I don't believe there was a referee right within that distance to see it. They are going to discuss it. It is still three to nothing on the scoreboard. It's th this is the second time in a championship game anything can happen, and we're seeing that tonight. And I don't think that ever went in, but St. Francis reacted like it did. And, and I'll tell you, right in the beginning, though, John, right in the beginning, I swear that the St. Francis player wasn't sure it went in either. I think he had to look and see what had happened. And when he looked behind him, that's when he put his hands so up. So it looks like they're going to say it didn't go in. So I think they're going to wave this off as they're looking at it. So I think it's going to remain 3-0 here, Randy. But still crazy. If for some reason, if they do call it a goal, that would be a, a pretty big blow to Canisius. If they do say no goal, they stay alive. Big call. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, that that's the tough part right now, and I still say, without a referee down there, that was the tough call, and that was the that was the big thing. They had the puck in the net, or thought they had it in the net, but right now we're just going to have to wait and see. There's an explanation going on at both benches 
And now a penalty referees. was assessed as well, and it went on Canisius. And we're looking to see number 10, Charles Piggott. And so now it's 3 nothing, but it looks like Canisius might be short-handed here, Randy. And I, I'm not totally sure what the penalty is on. Because, and I don't think uh, Piggott knows even what the penalty's on and what, what he's getting called for. He was shaking his head coming over here. But uh, it looks like the faceoff is going to go in the Canisius zone. So that means no goal. And uh, so for the second so, time in this game. To recap here, what just happened, St. Francis thought they scored. Canisius and a lot of us didn't think it even went in and it didn't go in. And now Canisius finds themselves shorthanded. So pretty crazy sequence again here, Randy. 16-12, the goal in the third, but it remains 3 up in St. Francis, but that's a bit of a double-edged sword because now for Canisius, yeah, they avoid that ball, but now they're shorthanded. And they didn't need to take a penalty this early in the game. That was one of the things they don't need to do is take penalties right now. And that uh, right now, that, that, uh, that doesn't help their cause at all. So again, the faceoff looks like it's gonna come to the right of the Canisius goal. And again, I'm not totally sure, but we're we're getting a one final explanation from the referees. They're going for the faceoff. Faceoff deep. Roberts to take it for St. Francis. Left to right, they win the draw back left point. They'll spin it off to the far half wall. Working it around. Down low, Peterson left circle. Setting up shot back behind the net. Left circle again, fed down low, back by the net, comes in front to the left circle. High slot, winds, fires, and that's going way over top of the net and wide. Left to right, St. Francis keeps his own. Roberts comes right for the score! Right on target, no doubt about that one. With 15.48 to go on the third, 4 nothing St. Francis, and that is an absolute killer and dagger for Canisius, Randy. And I believe that was Ryan Peterson who did the one-timer and that was just to the right of the goalie. And I'll tell you, the goalie just never stood a chance in that one. And that was a deadly, deadly penalty for Canisius to take. They now trail four to nothing. They have buried themselves into a pretty deep hole. Uh, St. Francis is leading shots and goal right now, 16 to 15. Off the draw, it is St. Francis who wins the draw near side. They'll play it across, goes deep into Canisius territory, far wing, giving away left circle, backhander, and that goes over top of the net, and that was a careless play, but didn't go in. Right point, winds and fires, ricochets, pinballs high slot. Stolen back by the Crusaders, takes a bump, but they finally get it out through center with 15.20 to go on the third. Four nothing, St. Francis, our score. Played back around to the near half wall. Canisius working it ahead. Crusader gets stood up right there at center as it goes back inside the St. Francis zone far side. Left to right, Red Raiders gonna push it ahead out through center. Canisius there to grab. They'll work left side, playing it down deep into St. Francis territory. From the far wing, left to right, they'll glide a pass. Saucer across the Canisius line. Left to right, the Raiders gonna push it deep near corner. Back around far side, Crusaders stolen away. Far corner takes a bump. Stolen by Urban, but he can't clear for Canisius. Near half wall, turns and fires right through the crease. No one there to tip it home. Stolen back by Canisius. Right to left, they come a storming. Right so firing one right into the bread basket there of Carrillo. And again, he's there with the answer to make the save. And that's been the first real work that he's gotten here in this period. And we're already uh, about two and a half minutes into the period. And that's really one of the first shots he has seen right now. Shots are even at 16 apiece. St. Francis wins the draw. Don't forget there was the additional delay on that no goal. Bowen pushes it out through center. Schmidt there to grab it at center ice for Canisius. He'll push it ahead to LaDuca. Right to left, dumps it the rest of the way. Carrillo out of his net, leaves for Bowen. St. Francis in their own territory, left to right up the ice. They'll glide a saucer up the middle. Stolen back again by the Crusaders. Working it up left wing, LaDuca ahead, taking a high slot, Urban firing a wrister, save made! Kicked away near corner, LaDuca, sharp angle, the flex over top of the net by Urban to the far corner, stolen back by St. Francis, pass ahead, broken up right at the Canisius blue line by Schmidt, taken again by the Red Raiders, high slot left to right, Canisius Lawrence, oh, backhander, save made! Now second chance, big save there by Sus. 
back to the right point, held in, and now they'll turn and fire as it deflects right in front, right circle, that shot back, backhander and gloving it there is Suss, and he just says that's enough of this. I want to try to keep my team alive, Randy, and get the whistle. And that's exactly, that's the best way to describe it. I think he was just, he thought he had the first shot and it was blocked by a teammate in front of him. Then a second shot comes in there and he finally gets a third shot and he finally gloved it and said, I've had enough. Let's get a face off. Broad wins the draw back right circle. Working at left point, that's broken up. Pass up the right side, making their way across the line. Canisius right circle, throws it in front, save made! As it comes to the far side, Broad got a backhanded out through center. Canisius there to grab inside their own zone. 13-20 to go here, third period, and it's 4-0 St. Francis. They're grabbing inside their own zone, left to right. Back to the left point, held in. High slot, Canisius, right point. They'll wind and fire to foot it over top of the cage! Coming so close again. Left point held in. Canisius zips it left circle. Stolen by the Red Raiders. They'll flip it high in the air on the backhand. Out through center. Puck trickling into Canisius territory from the far side. Crusaders weren't ready for the pass on the right side. Now give it away. Richard Furring, what a save there. Stone cold robbery. As St. Francis gave it away in the left circle. Canisius stole a big opportunity. They just can't get it in there, Randy. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> If I'm that St. Francis defender, I come over and personally shake the hand of my goalie who just saved my bacon because I'll tell you, that was a co almost costly giveaway right within the St. Francis. Braun goal. wins the draw right circle. Rister, that howitzer is blocked, and St. Francis will clear. Canisius there to retrieve back behind their own net. There to grab it, number 11, Gianni Vona. Behind his own net, he'll start up, working at right wing. Saucer pass glided on ahead. Right to left across the St. Francis zone. Back behind the Red Raiders net. Far corner. They'll control. One on one, they're digging away. Tussling in a long right point. Winds and fires off a skin front. Same mate. And then that trickles right in on goal, deflected away. St. Francis left to right. Roberts has it. He'll dish it all the way right in on the goaltender, Suss, who will cover up to the far crease for the whistle, Randy. <laughs> Once again. St. Francis goaltending comes through. Carrillo just comes through with another big save. He has now faced 21 shots in this game, has stopped every one of them, and he still has the shutout going. 12.09 remaining, 4 0 St. Francis. Still plenty of time in the action, though. St. Francis wins the draw. Left point. Winds it first to foot that never got through. Second chance. Oh, and that's backhanded up and wide to the near corner held in Red Raiders. Right point. They'll pitch it into the near circle. And Canisius will flip it right back out. Puck goes into the St. Francis zone. Lead in pass left side. Across the Canisius last row. Firing a wrister. Sharp angle. Nice save. Sus. As that was another dangerous chance. He's ready in the butterfly for another save. And one thing right now is St. Francis is not setting on a 4-0 lead. They're still playing offensive hockey. They're trying to increase their lead a little bit here. Canisius, on the other hand, they are still trying to play catch-up hockey here. Evan Setapane loses the draw though. Canisius will roll it back behind their own net. Near corner comes right out in front, but the Crusaders are going to backhand out to center. Right to left, it's Morrow. He's going to dish it deep into St. Francis territory to the far side, giving away. Right half circle, side steps ahead, back out high left point. Winds and fires, snatching it out of midair and just flashing that leather again, Randy. Is Correa again stepping up big on the save for the whistle? Well, it's as, as this game goes on, Carrero seems to keep getting stronger. And I know, John, this is impossible, but he seems to be getting bigger. And I'll tell you, he has made some huge saves for St. Francis. Coin wins the draw. Let's throw a firing arister. That goes off broad in front. Left corner, Coin on it again for Canisius. Down ice right to left. Puck in the St. Francis zone from the far side. Big bone crunching hit, but it's played out the center. Left to right, fire wrister, kick save made. As it's inside Canisius territory from the far wall, left to right. It's broad high slot, firing one, and that goes well over top. That ski ramped almost a country mile up and out of play. And I'll tell you, Canisius cannot afford to play that loosely back in their own zone. St. Francis is right there. They are skating stride for stride with these guys from Canisius, and they're turning that puck over in their own zone, and St. Francis is taking advantage of it, getting some big shots on goal. Roberts to take the draw, wins it for St. Francis. Left to right down the ice, back behind the Canisius net. Right circle, Bowen 
He'll keep it back for Roberts near corner. Left to right down the ice of the Red Raiders. Canisius there to take it. Long pass right side. It's Canisius across the St. Francis line. Right circle winds and fires. That got blocked. Far corner. Throws it right out in front. And then a wraparound chance. That's turned down to the near corner. Bowen there to grab. He'll rocket it off the far side. Roberts finally makes his way to center. They'll push it up the right wing. Gliding across the St. Francis left circle. Canisius line fires one and that goes over top of the net. Goes to the near corner where Canisius will take it. Schmidt right to left. Christian, oh, he is leveled right at the St. Francis line. Roberts takes it back left to right. He'll gun it down into Canisius territory from the near corner. Crusaders gonna send a pass. Stolen right back by St. Francis. Left to right, they'll tussle it down deep. Back behind the Crusaders net with 9.58 to go on regulation. 4-0 St. Francis to score. As they take a bump, they'll push it left wing. St. Francis will flip it right back out to center. They're going to dish it into Canisius territory, right corner. Played right back out. Urban right to left. Canisius cutting in on goal. A circle back hand save made. And then another save as he covers up. And that just continues to stay out, Randy. Boy, what can you say if you're Canisius at this point? They're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at them. Well, Correa just continues to make some saves. He made one about a minute, minute and a half ago with his pad. I have no idea where that leg came from. All of a sudden, it was there, stopped the puck, and again, Canisius was spoiled. Yusinski to take the draw for Canisius, and he'll win it to the far corner. Stolen back by the goalie, played back left point. Canisius winds it for a save made short side, tried to bank it in. Did not work from the far side, St. Francis with the steal. They'll gun it up the left wing, deflected into Canisius territory. St. Francis gets it, left to right down the ice. Near corner, a big hit there. And now we're gonna have a call coming up here and we'll see who it's going to, but I think this is the referee starting to know this is a rivalry game. They don't want the physicalness to get too far out of hand. Well, I think they've already seen a couple of the big hits, and now they're going to call an elbowing penalty against Urban. Canisius. Against Canisius. That's and, Urban. And, and I'll tell you, right now, they've seen what a couple of those big hits can do out there. I, I, I think they want to keep this game under control and make sure it doesn't get out of hand here. It is 4 to nothing, 9-16 remaining. Broad to take the draw for the Red Raiders. Stolen near corner, plate to the line, not out, right point. Whipped it across left circle. Red Raiders have it again, right point. He'll push it off to the near circle. Working it back out, high center point. Winds and fires, that goes off a stick over top of the net. Tap to the left corner. Coin steals it away. Potential two on one, Canisius. Right to left down the ice. He'll work it right circle. Glides his way, pass, cuts in on goal. It's gonna go wide. St. Francis takes it behind their own net. With 8.46 to go in the third, it is the Red Raiders on the power play for another minute 28 and 8.41 to go in the game. Red Raiders dump it deep from the far side. Canisius will be able to just take it and flick it right down the length of the rink. Correo came out of his net but never played the puck from the near side, stolen back by Braun. Has it for Canisius right to left. He's just doing a good job of penalty killing, fighting for the puck, still trying to get it free. And now it's St. Francis who has it in their own zone. That's Peterson. Left to right, he'll start his way. Feeds it cross rink. Left to right, it is St. Francis winding their way in. It's Mann from the left circle. Feeds it to Peterson at the right circle. Setting up shop is St. Francis. Left to right, right to Peterson rockets one over top of the stick side. And it deflects and goes out of play. And again, they uh, are, we're setting up on the power play very nicely there. They still have 42 seconds left in their power play. And they just really set that up nice. Got a good shot. It was going a little bit wide of the Canisius net, and it got deflected up into that net. Canisius still hanging on here, trailing 4 nothing. Peterson on this draw. And it is Canisius who wins it, though, in the near corner. Stolen by Roberts behind the Canisius net. Near corner. They'll control it. Peterson back to the right point. Giving back right circle. St. Francis Delano throws it in front. They couldn't get the shot away. Backhand turn away stick side of Suss from the far side. Held in. They are really trudging along at it. Roberts back behind the Canisius net. Leaves it to the far corner for Peterson. 
One on three, sends it down low, left circle, high slot, winds and fires, and that goes wide to the far side as it's blocked away by our corner, Peterson, and now Canisius will take it, and they'll dump through center. We're back to five aside as the Urban Meyer expires left to right at St. Francis. They'll play it up the right side for Roberts. Stick to stick, tape to tape, pass around the end boards, takes the bump. Again, the Miners expired. St. Francis by the net, tried to throw it in front, did not connect. Second chance turned away, far post. Near corner, Canisius there to grab it. And a long outlet left side did not connect, icing our call. And now this word from Howard Hanna. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard Hanna. home happens here 653 to go regulation four nothing st francis they win the draw right point bowen he'll send it to the near corner still controlling it stolen by canisius near side he'll play it out through center right to left crusaders push it deep back behind the st francis net from the far side, working it on ahead. He'll make his way, storming through center ice, left to right, St. Francis. That's broken up nicely right at the Canisius blue line. St. Francis grabs it again, high slot. Once more, stolen by the Crusaders. Right to left here. They'll gun it up the left wing, gonna go down and not gonna be icing as the goaltender Correo played it, trying to melt the clock. Behind his own net go the Red Raiders and they'll push out through center. There to grab a Canisius in their own end. 6.06 to go in the third. 4 0 St. Francis in the Monsignor Martin Championship. Randy Schulz and John Krub on the call as the puck from center ice by Bowen spun far right of the Canisius net to the left point. Comes out over the line. It's stolen back by St. Francis inside their own zone. Pass up the right wing across the Canisius line in stride, but couldn't get away from the defender. Near circle held in along the near half wall. Push down low, takes the bump there, stood up in the Canisius zone. Right point, winds and fires, that's golf wide on the near side. Five and a half to go in the third, four nothing St. Francis. Canisius from right to left, they'll finally make their way across the Red Raider blue line. Now on the far corner, right to left, it's Canisius controlling. Far half wall, rolls one in on goal, that went wide. Back out high left point, they'll wind and fire, that's golfed over top of the net coin there to correct it for Canisius gets stood up staying on the puck they are whacking away another hit in the St. Francis zone and that's going to cause a penalty and there may be more here Randy a commotion as it looks like we are having a call we're going to see who it's on clock stop 5.05 to go in the third and with St. Francis seemingly in command this is where you start really watching to make sure that something bad really doesn't happen. Good job by the referees here. Absolutely, and I'll tell you again, it was a, it was a scrum over there, and you get a little nervous when you start watching the pushing and shoving going on, and it looks like it's going to be one player for each side that's going to go in the penalty boxes. It'll be coincidental minors, as far as I know. Zachary Can't Glinski is going off for St. Francis, looking to see who it is for Canisius. You, sorry to cut you off there, Randy. Oh, no, that's okay. I saw the Canisius player go in, and I didn't catch his number when, uh, when he sat down in there. So uh, both the captains are over there right now hearing the explanation of this and why the referees are doing it. To me, and I think to you, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think you said it perfectly. They're trying to keep control of this game. They've done a good job to this point. There's no doubt St. Francis is on top of this one, 4 to nothing. They've, they're, they're just, they can taste the championship, there's no question. The only thing Canisius has really done in this game is they've outshot St. Francis 24 to 21 at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But goaltending has been the big difference for St. Francis. Here. And St. Francis has been opportunistic. They were able to take advantage of the chances when they got them. Canisius, despite all the effort, has it. But this has been a really good game, again, we're looking to see who the players are. It's Glinski for St. Francis, still looking to identify who it is for Canisius with 5.05 to go in the third and St. Francis by four. And it looks like the faceoff is gonna come out over the blue line and uh, we will go from there. Faceoff and neutral ice. Broad wins it for St. Francis. He'll wheel it off the far side, back out. And now that's stolen away by Canisius. Stolen back again, they'll glide it deep into Canisius territory. From the far side, they'll wheel it ahead. Broad grabs it in neutral ice. They'll spin it back inside their own zone. 
Right point, held in, high slot. Canisius rolls it towards the goal, stolen back by the Red Raiders. Long pass near side did not connect, but deflected, so no icing with four and a half to go here, third period. Four nothing as it's controlled by St. Francis last circle. Canisius wasn't, or check that St. Francis wasn't happy with that no call as it's controlled there by Canisius. They'll work their way and try to juggle it from the right point, but could not do so offside the call. And I'll tell you, we, this has still been so typical for, for Canisius in this game. Yeah. They have not been able to catch a break at all here. And uh, again, St. Francis takes full advantage of it here. Faceoff will come again over the blue line. Off the draw it comes far side. Canisius still not happy over that missed icing call, but they push it deep into St. Francis territory. Correll play it off to the far side. Roberts working it ahead for Peterson. Left to right. He'll glide across Canisius' line from the far circle. High slot. Left to right. It's the Red Raiders. Back to the right point. They're setting it up. Lines and fires through a screen, but that got blocked away. Stolen back by Canisius. Out through center. They'll dump it the rest of the way deep. Left corner. St. Francis there to grab it. Working Kelp. Far side. Controlling it back, and now the Red Raiders clear the zone as we come up on 3.40 to go here in the third. And it's Peterson across the Canisius line to a right circle, plays it across. Feather to the left half wall, takes a bump, but he pushes it deep. It's Canisius back behind their own net, right to left. They'll work it ahead up the left side. Floats a dotter across the line, has left. Fire one, kick save made there as it comes to the far side. St. Francis in their own territory. They'll gun it near side, left to right down the ice. One on one, and now a big bump in the corner of the St. Francis zone. Canisius keeps the puck in, far side played it up, but it deflects and goes out, and St. Francis getting closer, Randy. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, John, if I'm St. Francis, I'm playing for two things right now. You've almost got the one pretty much locked up, that being the victory, four nothing over Canisius right now. The second thing is I'm playing for the shutout right now, and you've got to really play hard, and you've got to play smart. Well said there, Coach Schultz, as Canisius has it in their own zone near side. Three minutes to go. Canisius right to left, ramping up their attack, trying to at least get on the board. St. Francis, Bowen there to take in their own zone. They'll lift it ahead up the right side. Misplayed it! Breakaway! In tight and saved by Suss. He got in a little too close that time. Canisius on the takeaway. Inside their own zone, right to left with 2.40 to go in regulation. And now it's played ahead up the left side. Bowen first in after in his own zone and then takes a bump there, but he'll send it all the way through center. Meanwhile, for Canisius, Suss out of his net. He'll play it off near side, stolen back as it goes off the back of the net. Now Canisius will hacky sack it out through center. Puck deep into St. Francis territory. Bowen from the right wing, stolen back by the Crusaders, and they'll send it the rest of the way deep, but it did not connect, so an icing call. With 2.14 to play here in the third, 4 up in St. Francis, and it's been a great game here tonight, but St. Francis has done enough to put themselves in this position. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, the penalties are over with, and we did finally find out it was Ryan Coyne who was serving the penalty there for Canisius on that, and the faceoff is way down in the Canisius end. Broad wins the draw left to right at St. Francis. They'll wheel it around the end boards. Comes to the far corner. Red Raiders zip it back to the near side with two minutes left to go. Stolen back by Canisius behind their own net. Playing it far side. And now it's held in left circle on the backhand high slot. Fired one that ricochets off the skate well wide. Far side, left point. They'll wind and fire. That's blocked away. Canisius from right to left. They'll play it up the left side. St. Francis line left circle, throws it across. No one there to chip it home, though. From the far side, Canisius with a minute 40 to go. Right circle, they'll wind it far off the goal post. Left corner, Canisius stays on it. Left point, they'll hold it right to left. They'll fire a point shot from the left side, but it deflects and goes out of play. And again, it's just been the story of the night for Canisius, Randy. So close, but just so far. Absolutely. <laughs> And I think, I think they went past the frustration level a couple of minutes ago. So I think right now they're just trying to play out the string in the final minute 31 here. The faceoff coming just to the right of the St. Francis net. Off the draw, Canisius left point, plays it across right point, winds and fires. That's whistled wide of the near post. St. Francis there to steal. Ahead for Peterson. 
across ice to Roberts, left to right, left circle, floats it in right on the goalie, Suss, who saw a couple St. Francis jerseys coming at him, gets the whistle. And he just decided just to hang on to it. He had gloved it, gloved it very nicely. He had complete control of it. There was nothing going wrong, but he decided just to hang on to it to be on the safe side. A minute 15 for nothing for St. Francis on top of Canisius. Roberts going to take this draw and off the face off goes off the side of the post far side how about that as Canisius will float a saucer straight out through center right to left Canisius there to grab DeLeo up the left wing stolen back by St. Francis left to right they'll work their way inside a minute to go here third period 4 nothing St. Francis that close to a championship right to left it's Canisius they'll play out to center once more, Crusaders grab it. They'll turn and whip it right back in. 45 seconds left to go in the third. 4-0 St. Francis, a score. It's left to right, and now the Red Raiders will flip it high in the air on the backhand. Down deep, going to go right on the goal. He's sus. Right to left, it's the Crusaders. 30 seconds left to go. St. Francis starting to feel it. Stolen, high slot broad, and he puts it wide on the near post in close on sus. From the far side, it's the Crusaders working it ahead right side. Coin right to left. He'll glide it right in on the netminder. Carrillo plays it off to the near corner. Control it. Glinsky, big hit far side, but it's cleared out through center. And then another one as it continues inside 10 seconds. They can count it down. Near side, Canisius right to left. Three seconds and two. And ladies and gentlemen, your mom, senior Martin champions. For the 2020-2021 season, I give you the St. Francis Red Raiders. They win it tonight, 4-0 over Canisius. What a game, and you gotta give St. Francis credit. They took advantage of the opportunities. Canisius played well, but St. Francis in the end made the key plays. They walk out of here with champions, and they get the title here from Harbor Center. What a game by them. And they certainly played every aspect of the game that they had to play. They back-checked, they forecheck, they scored on their opportunities that they were given, they scored on a power play, they killed their penalties, and I'll tell you, we cannot say enough about Samuel Carrillo in the nets, stopping 26 shots on the net, posting the shutout. He made the huge saves when he needed to in the game. And one thing about Carrillo, 23 of 26, but remember, he made 32 saves on 33 chances last time. So he made 23 tonight. That means he's only allowed one goal in the last two games. And he's made 55 saves on 56 shots. Pretty incredible. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, he was hot tonight. And there's no question, he took full advantage of his six foot five frame and, and did everything he could to, uh, to lead his team to a championship. Meanwhile, before we sign off here, we just want to say for Canisius, they've played really well tonight. They couldn't capitalize on the opportunities, but they should be proud of the way they played because they really gave it everything they had, even to the last seconds. Absolutely, and they did have the opportunities that they could have scored on, and they just could not put the puck in the net at all. So, yes, kudos to them as well on a, on a great season. So Carrillo's going to be the player of the game, and... That's pretty much going to wrap it up here. So, Randy, it's been a pleasure working with you all season long. Absolutely. I'm John Caruba. You're Randy Schultz and our cameraman, Tim Gardner, and, of course, the man who puts it all together, our executive producer, Frank Wolf. And as L. Michaels likes to say, good luck to WNY Athletics the rest of the way. We have a couple big games coming up for you tomorrow, and Dan Lalama will have the call for you on the play-by-play -play right back here at Harbor Center. He's going to do a great job. And so that's going to do it. For Coach Randy Schultz, John Karuba, again, your final score here tonight. St. Francis wins the Monsignor Martin Championship 4-0 over Canisius. Thank you so much for tuning in right here on WNY Athletics. Good night from Harbor Center in Buffalo.